Hello flight simmers. It's been a while since I put out a video due to holidays and work and that sort of thing. But it's been very gratifying to see people continue to like, subscribe and leave comments despite my lack of new content. So thank you for your continued support. But now we do have new content and a new helicopter. Another gratifying part of doing this whole YouTube thing is when you're invited to preview a new helicopter before general release. So special thanks to High Performance Group for including little old me. HPG of course gave us the highly acclaimed H145 which is often considered a benchmark within the helicopter sim community. So with that in mind I have some pretty high expectations for the H160. Although it should be stressed that this is the preview version and so should not be considered the finished product. Currently there are two flavours of H160 available, the civilian version and the luxury version. The civilian version can seat up to 12 passengers in the back. I did come up with nicknames for them all but then I saw this guy had hype engineer in his vest and thought what if all these characters are 3D scans of the developers? I don't know if they are or not but I decided to keep the nicknames to myself. But why fly a minibus when you can fly a limousine? The cabin of the luxury version is much more spacious with four large comfy seats and four passengers who clearly don't want to make eye contact with one another. On the outside the tail has an interesting design with a slight kink to the rotor and this double winged stabiliser. The rotors are also an interesting design. When the H160 was first developed, the engineers were worried that the pilots might steal them, so added boomerangs to the tips of the rotors to ensure that they always came back. Alright, I'm sure there's some good aerodynamic reads in the shape like that, but I just can't say for certain what it is. If you know, please do share it in the comments. If you've got a better pun than boomerangs coming back, go ahead and share that too. Moving on, we've got some nice mechanical movement in the tail rotor and on the main rotor. And the H160 comes equipped with a retractable landing gear. Inside you have a good amount of detail and almost all the switches work. But this is the preview version so we may get the rest of them working too, but all the basics are working as expected. And there's this handy little tablet. Now it's not the first MSFS aircraft to include a tablet, but I think it's the most functional one that I've seen. All the icons on the home screen actually do something, and if you get bored on a long flight, there's even a little game to play. Which apparently I'm not very good at. Now the notes that came with this were very careful to point out that this is a sophisticated aircraft and that it's essential to read the quick start guide before flying it. However, patience is not one of my virtues, so I immediately loaded up and started pressing switches. Then, after a couple of crashes, I went back and read the quick start guide. Startup is much you'd expect from this kind of helicopter. Batteries, generators, engines to idle while it warms up, and then move them to flight. Things worth noting in particular are the radio altimeter switches above the co-pilot's head and to engage the autopilot before trying to take off. If you're unfamiliar with helicopter autopilots, they're not quite the same as you'd find in a plane. While they do provide the usual navigation assistance, altitude, airspeed and heading control, even if you turn those off, they provide essential flight control assistance. Maybe essential is too strong a word. You can fly it without the autopilot, but it's a real handful and if you're carrying passengers, there's a good chance you'll be scrubbing the seats the next week. By all means try it without the autopilot, it can be done, but it's not a lot of fun. You may also want to arm the emergency floats if you're going anywhere near water. I'll demonstrate these a bit later. Before we can start to taxi, we need to release the parking brake. Then, to get moving, pitch forward gently and ease the collective up just enough to start edging forward and watch for other traffic. The 
you could control the speed of the cyclic and stop using the tow brakes. the autopilot engaged, takeoff is easy. You may want to pitch back slightly if you want to lift into a hover and you may want to touch a right rudder. This is a very different story when you're trying it without the autopilot. One of the key bindings I recommend setting up on your HOTAS is the auto hover. This takes a bit of practice to get used to but if you bring the helicopter to complete stop in all directions and you engage the auto hover it'll keep you there with no input required at all freeing up for things like operating hoists or playing Flappy Bird with Tablet. When you're ready to move, just disengage the auto hover and carry on. Like many modern-day sophisticated aircraft, the H-160 comes with an onboard nagging Nancy, which is a nicer version of the original name I was thinking of. You know the one I mean. If, like me, you like to fly low and look at the scenery, it'll constantly remind you that there is terrain in the vicinity or other traffic. This can get a little tiresome, but fortunately, there is a mute switch. The warning light can blink all at once. I don't let a computer tell me what to do. Now you can of course land this helicopter completely by hand, but you can make the workload a little easier by using the flight assists, which are particularly useful if the landing area is quite small. Like this rooftop in front of me for instance. I can engage the auto hover before I reach the roof. With the auto hover engaged, you can still make adjustments and creep forward until you're over the landing site. At this point, you could probably descend by setting a vertical speed, but it's fairly easy to just disengage the altitude hold and just control your descent with the collective. While we're on the topic of a controlled descent, VRS has been modelled for this helicopter. Yes, I've tried it, and yes, you can recover from it. With that in mind, keep a descent rate very slow when landing. Even if you don't succumb to VRS, the landing gear is very easy to break. You want to be aiming for around 2 feet per second, and reducing that to just about 1, just as you touch down. VRS can be turned off via the tablet if you don't want to worry about it. And there's also an arcade mode if you just want to fly around and not worry about all these pesky things like physics. I am now actually landed, but as is so often the case of MSFS, the collision mesh of the building doesn't line up with the visible problem. If you want a nice, smooth, easy landing, then having a landing gear with wheels means you can do a rolling landing. This is not much different to landing a small GA plane, in fact it's probably easier than that.
Now, I should point out that the floats are distinctly labelled as emergency floats, and therefore I don't think this is intended to be an amphibious aircraft. There are a couple of things to check before landing in the water. Firstly, check the floats are armed. Secondly, you still need to lower your landing gear. I know this seems a bit superfluous if you're landing on floats, but if you don't, MSFS will say that you crashed into the water, even though the floats still deploy. It took many frustrating attempts to figure out why this wasn't working. As with the rooftop landing, I'm going to use auto hover and gently lower myself onto the water with a nice slow descent rate. We don't panic our passengers. Once you're on the water, you'll find you can taxi around just like you can on land. Once in the air again, you can attract the floats using the tablet. Now for a new section I've called, Can I Break It? Well, I try to find out what happens if I abuse the aircraft. First of all, I tried overstressing the engine by yanking the collective up. This caused some warning lights and alarms to go off, and the roasters did seem to slow down, but that's as bad as it got. I held this for quite a while, and the engine never actually failed. Next, I tried to overspeed the helicopter. I got a maximum speed warning, but there didn't seem to be any effect on the handling.
also tried the usual aerobatics, which also set off some alarms, but nothing broke. Although, I imagine the passengers were less than impressed. I did attempt an auto rotation or two as well, and I do believe it's possible, but I just couldn't get down gently enough without damaging the landing gear, which according to MSFS is the equivalent of instant death. All in all I have to say, I'm very impressed with this aircraft. Not only does it look stunning, the detail is outstanding. I haven't even touched on all the different things that the NFDs can do, mostly because I'm still figuring them out. The real jewel in the H-160's crown has to be the autopilot. Once you learn to use it properly, it's an extremely useful tool for reducing your workload. No more wiggling all over the place or crashing the side of a mountain by trying to set up the GPS or just the radio. And although the autopilot can be tricky to begin with, once you get the hang of it, you can land just about anywhere. So, how much does this magnificent machine set you back? It goes on sale this Friday, 27th of October, for $49.99. Now, that may seem quite a lot compared to most other MSFS modules, but it's a lot of helicopter, and if the H15 is anything to go by, there's more good stuff to come. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you decide to pick one of these up, I hope you enjoy flying it, and let me know how you get on in the comments. Until next time, fly safe.